One young man escaped certain death over the weekend at his, as his car plunged head first into dense bushes in the coastal side at the beginning of Alufi North Village. According to a police spokesperson, the driver was very lucky to escape with minor injuries after assessing the conditions in which he crashed. The matter is still under investigation, but the police said alcohol could be a factor in the crash, but that will be confirmed once the police investigation completes. The accident occurred early hours of Sunday morning, which will no doubt worry many motorists. Ongoing updates on mental health care brought back two professionals to the island with the health department's focus on improving one of the much talked about topics in many countries, including Niue. Dr Ian Souza from New Zealand said people who endure prolonged stress can ultimately deteriorate their mental state, but seeking assistance early can avoid more severe problems later on. Mental health is one of these issues that people don't talk about a lot. There's a bit of stigma and a bit of fear about it. And that's common in, in illnesses. Things like breast cancer or bowel cancer, people, people didn't talk about because they thought, oh, it's embarrassing to talk about. And mental health is a bit like that too. People tend not to talk about it. And some of the mental illnesses make people feel very guilty and, and they're quite hard on themselves. So um, we need to be a bit more open and encourage people to come and get some help if they need it. Like many conditions, there's a range of, of uh, presentations or there's a range of illnesses. So the example would be in diabetes. Some people have severe diabetes that needs injections with insulin. But a lot of people have milder forms of diabetes that just requires them to look after their diet better, avoid sugar. And if we do it well early on, we can prevent some of the more severe conditions. And I suppose the situation in Nui is similar. So last year I saw about 20 people, um, and those will be people who are the most, might have the most severe conditions, and the doctors here wanted some advice. But I also work in primary care in New Zealand, and we know that about 40% of the people who walk through the door to see their GP in New Zealand mm -hmm. have a mental health component to their presentation. So it might be they, ha they have diabetes, but they're also depressed, or they might have other sort of worries that get in the way of them getting better. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to talk about is that for people to think about mental health uh, as a broad uh, condition and that it's something that we can help with, and again, that will help their, their total well-being. Mm -hmm. Another issue that is common, says Dr. Souza, is the stigma by the mainstream that could exacerbate conditions and bringing awareness is one of the focus areas that communities need to develop for support. A lot of stigma is about, um, I suppose, fear. It's about lack of knowledge. And a lot of, I suppose, some of what we need to do is talk about it a bit more. We've seen conditions uh, in other parts of the world, you know, not that long ago, 20 years ago, we were completely afraid of AIDS and HIV. And um, now we know a lot about it. We can treat it. And the condition is people talk about it openly. And mental, he mental health and mental illness is one of the last um, sort of stigmatized conditions. I suppose the, the important thing to know about the science is we used to think of people with mental illnesses as being separate, that mm -hmm. only, it only happened to some people. But all the research now suggests that we can make anybody mentally ill, mm -hmm. and it's about looking after ourselves. So we, it's not that something that happens to one group of people. It's something that happens to all of us, and therefore we need to take that approach. And what we find is the more we talk about it, the more we realize that actually everyone probably has some experience of it, either personally or in their families or in their friends. And the more we talk about it, the more that we can look after our brothers or sisters or, or friends. One of the nice things, this is my second visit to Nui, is just what uh, sort of closely knit and generally supportive community it is. And I suppose by just being able to talk about it, by being able to be a bit more sympathetic and a bit more understanding to people who are suffering from various mental illnesses, we can make a huge difference. Because often um, 
you can imagine somebody who's depressed, they will be feeling very sad, they won't be sleeping, and they feel guilty about themselves. They might even have thoughts of, of suicide or things, kind of very scary, very dark thoughts. And the single thing that will get them through is some support, a uh, uh, sympathetic ear, and also um, a gentle sort of guidance into getting extra help because we know um, that sort of broader support as well as some, some medicines can make people better and can make a difference and can actually save lives. Niue might not have a crisis, but numbers are still high for the island's population despite reassurance that our mental health sector is coping. Dr. Sousa said there are different forms of mental health like that, the more common stress can lead to depression. This is different from mental illness. The two mental health experts are also hoping to visit some of the communities in their follow-up visit. An overhaul of one of the power station's two generators is taking place at the new power corporation's efforts to upgrade its machines after a five-year operation at the station. General Manager for New Power Corporation, Speed Ohetu 2, said the much-needed overhaul is done by Goff Goff and Hammer, who originally installed the engines. The overhaul job cost, the, cost over $100,000, which has been funded by NZAID. Asked if the overhaul job stemmed from recent power outages, he said some of the recent power cuts to the southern side of the island was caused by a fault at the station and a cable, but that has been rectified. Another job for the corporation is the laying of cables that is expected to start on the southern side of the island. Niue Athletics Association last week sent a young team to the Oceania Regional Athletic Meet in Samoa, but a setback to Niue Athletics team medal hope will see changes to the relay lineup if one of the athletes does not receive clearance to perform. Reports from Team Niue media advisor, who is also in Samoa for the Oceania Athletics Championship, said Michael Jackson Jr., who has been at a high-performance training facility in Australia, sprained his hamstring and might be replaced by Janam Hopator for the relay team. It is unsure whether Michael Jackson Jr. tore or sprained his hamstring during training that is yet to be determined by his physiotherapist. Otherwise, reports from Team Niwe is that the team arrived safe and enjoying Samoa with attendance at Ai Niwe Village Church on Sunday. The competition will begin today or started early this morning and will end on Thursday. And to end our news bulletin for tonight, four under-21 soccer teams competed in the opening tournament of the island soccer season last Saturday. The enthusiastic Tamba Manas soccer teams from New York Primary School kicked off the events on Saturday with fun competition for the youngsters and more so for their parents who made it a special family day to encourage their kids to play. With rain dampening the field, it did not stop the competition with Avasele fielding two teams this year, one from Malofi and one from Tuapa. Lofi team took out the tournament, winning two games and one equaliser game with Tuapa. Tuapa took second place, Avasele first took third place and Avasele two took fourth place. The opening of the season was greatly enjoyed by all spectators. The village teams will begin the soccer season this Saturday. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.